Hey people, today I'm going to be doing something maybe a bit more edgy. Um, I'm going to be looking into making some napalm. Now I know what you're thinking. Uh, napalm's been done on YouTube um, quite a bit. I think um, it's pretty easy to make. All you need uh, to make one type of napalm is really just uh, polystyrene or styrofoam and gasoline. And these are two things that I think exists in almost every American household or readily accessible. So I'm gonna make napalm, uh, don't get me wrong, but I, I'm a scientist. I'm, I'm kind of curious if I can make different forms of napalm. Um, and I'm not quite sure uh, as of filming this, what exactly I'll add. Um, I'm gonna be creative about it or try to be, um, and I'll see what I can get. Firstly, I have to get gasoline, which I have plenty of in my vehicles. Um, but there's one vehicle I have that I don't really drive right now because the, uh, the tags are expired um, and I have gasoline in there that uh, over time will go bad and so I've been meaning to either uh, drive the car or use it in a video or maybe something else. Um, so I have to first get it out of the fuel tank. Now this is the first time that I think I've shown any kind of behind the scenes uh, footage but this is my 1986 Chevrolet Corvette pace car edition in uh, competition yellow, which sadly I don't get to drive very often, but um, that doesn't mean it still can't be useful to me. And uh, today, of course, is going to be what gasoline it has in its fuel tank. Now, if you would believe it, these Corvettes don't have a fuel tank that's um, located on the sides, or at least the gas cap is. It's actually pretty convenient. It's right here on the back. So, all I need to do is open this up like I would be filling it up and taking that gas cap off. And uh, I actually just replaced the entire fuel sender unit here, so I'm quite familiar with the anatomy of this uh, region of the car. And this isn't the most scientific position I've been in, and usually in the laboratory, then I would dare not lie on the floor like this, but I just want to get. A, um, a good shot of this round bottom flask I'll be using, which is exactly one liter. Um, you may recognize it from my milk distillation video. Um, and in the case of siphoning, I've never done it from a car. I have actually siphoned uh, wine before, but I do know that the receiving flask needs to be lower than the original flask. And since the fuel tanks on these Corvettes are um, pretty low, then we have to do it all the way down to the floor. Now I'll just feed this tube in here and pray that this is the right type of plastic that doesn't dissolve in gasoline or else I've made a big fool of myself. Okay, now I will apply suction to the other end and pray that gas comes out. And when this thing fills up, then um, I have to make sure to, well, cinch the flow off, right? Or at least raise this um, tube up. Oh. There it goes. That tastes terrible, by the way. And that's gasoline. That was actually super easy. Um, normally I'd explain the science, but I'm actually kind of uh, somewhat panicking right now because this is, after all, gasoline. I'm actually going to raise this entire flask when it gets high up. I'll try to take the camera with me. There we go. It's all physics, right? When the tube is down, then the flowing of the water, or sorry, the gasoline with um, gravity uh, forces more gasoline to come through the tube. Now that's the basics of it, I guess. And now we have gasoline, which looks a bit more yellow than I ever expected gasoline to really look. Um, and it's probably a lot more here than I could ever uh, realistically do too much with. Um, but you also notice that I have uh, upgraded my um, my uh, bench top here to include this uh, glass surface in case 
I uh, have any more um, spills or any sort to protect this uh, bench that I built. And then I also have this, uh, this black surface here to uh, maybe get some better imaging. Now, I can't use all of this at once, so I'm going to add just a little bit of the gasoline into this uh, Griffin Beaker um, to have a place to add my styrofoam to. And this is my first time really doing it, so I'm not quite sure at this point pouring how much I should add. Um, I decided to kind of go with maybe 75 milliliters or so um, because I had heard that it takes quite a bit of styrofoam. And my styrofoam source today is going to be this uh, Galileo thermometer uh, box that um, I'm, I have it currently on display, but when I transport, I don't really need the styrofoam uh, anymore. So my first addition of styrofoam into the gasoline, um, it kind of will uh, fizz actually, as the uh, there's a, there's trapped gas that's in the styrofoam um, when they make it into a foam, right? Um, so that as it dissolves is released and so it makes it look like the uh, gasoline is um, boiling but it's actually not um, and I had read online that there some people had experienced in kind of an exothermic uh, type reaction as um, the uh, styrofoam is added and so I was kind of watching for this and, and just putting my hand on the solution as I uh, stirred it to make sure that I'm not like um, having hot gasoline on my uh, bench top and this is of course uh, sped up now my process um, and as I went on um, I didn't really know what I was looking for but I started to notice that uh, at some point then it stopped dissolving altogether and instead it had this it, it, this white mass that was forming kinda in the bottom of the gasoline um, that was gooey kind of maybe to the point of like um, Sticky putty, or um, sticky putty, or play-doh, sort of, um, and it took uh, just about half of um, that container that I showed of styrofoam to get to the point of uh, where I got to this video. And here is after I've added all the styrofoam I want. As you can see, it's just kind of all in the bottom of that container. I did a control first with. Um, the napalm I had created um, and I would describe it as kind of this uh, liquidy solid um, and I, I ignited it with my uh, new lighter um, and um, yeah it burned it uh, burned quite well not to the ferocity of gasoline I don't think but um, definitely higher than just standard styrofoam um, the thing about this is you have of course the the outside gasoline will burn off but then um, once it has, you have this gasoline that's trapped on the inside of this plastic. Um, and I think that's kind of what makes it so uh, erratic looking. Um, all those trapped uh, gasoline liquids and gases trying to get out and then being combusted. Now to test more things, I um, took a larger glob of the napalm and I added some powdered aluminum that I had. Um, just kind of to add something. I'm not quite sure what I'm looking for here, um, but I had this on hand and so um, I thought it might be kind of interesting to look at um, if the uh, napalm itself was kind of like a metallic looking um, appearance to it. And as you can see it's actually kind of blending in quite well with my uh, aluminum uh, burning platform and uh, when I ignited this um, I didn't notice a huge difference. I think if anything it may have um, been a bit more flammable, but this is also like a four times as large piece as what I had um, used in the previous experiment. Um, and this burned for probably a solid two minutes. So I can imagine, you know, in warfare, this would be uh, quite a dangerous, dangerous item to use. Um, and as you can see, it's it's trying to escape my burning dish, and there goes my house fire alarm so that's also a problem all that smoke has now uh, polluted my entire garage and uh, this creates issues for me in the next experiment then I took a smaller um, dose of napalm learning from my mistakes and I'm uh, adding this uh, polyurethane uh, varnish that I have um, that I had this idea that maybe the uh, polystyrene and the uh, polyurethane might uh, form some kind of blend in the liquid phase here 
Um, but I think my issue was that this was like a water-based uh, polyurethane, so it may ha not have mixed uh, quite as well as it should have. And since there's so much solution, I tried adding uh, a bit of extra styrofoam to it to see if that um, that polyurethane could also um, dissolve that, but I, I couldn't get it to go. Um, so I ended up adding a bit more of my gasoline to try and bring all of it um, into solution uh, with mixing. And this worked pretty well, because um, by the end, I had kind of ended up with um, kind of a thicker solution with a few solids in it. Um, so I think there was some decent blending um, of the napalm with the uh, polyurethane. And here it is on my burning dish, a little messy looking. <laughs> it's funny, when I ignite this, then I don't even have to hold the flame to it because I think the fumes of the gasoline reached um, the fire itself. Um, and that was pretty cool. And I would say, if anything, I think the polyurethane is actually preventing this from burning too intensely. It doesn't look... It looks just a little bit off to me. Um, I don't know. Tell me what you think. Um, I wasn't as impressed by this run. Um, but again, this one still burns quite a bit. Um, produces a lot of smoke, and of course... You end up setting off my fire alarm. Um, this is the burnt char. You can actually see, I think that white portion is some of that polyurethane that's not burned. In my last experiment, I took a very small amount, trying to really learn, and I added none other than salted butter. Now my thought process here, um, salted butter doesn't mix with water, right? Um, it's a solid at, at, as long as you cool it in the fridge beforehand, so I'm trying to go quick here and maybe have some solid phase mixing um, with the uh, solid napalm here. Um, so I'm just kind of messing around here. Um, and unfortunately, I couldn't get great mixing. They don't really seem to like each other, which is probably because the um, interchain uh, bonding, the non-covalent bonding uh, of that polyure, uh, polystyrene um, is preventing any kind of inclusion from anything that any of the molecules that uh, are inside butter. And I found that um, it took quite a bit of effort to light it, I think maybe because I, I first uh, melted that butter on top of it, but once it got going, then it, it looked pretty similar to the other burnings. I think, if anything, it might be a little bit less intense, and maybe because that butter is acting kind of as a buffer towards uh, the surface area of the napalm and preventing it from uh, really efficiently um, combusting. Um, and I'm not quite sure of that. Usually in cooking, you see that like butter will burn in a pan if you leave it for too long, but um, I don't really see... Um, I don't really see any evidence of something similar to that, especially when you look at like the solid mass here. It's pretty white, so I think maybe butter survived in that. In my last experiment, I just have a huge glob that I'll be burning outside and on the ground um, as kind of a grand finale, for safety reasons of course, um, keeping it away from my bench and the rest of the gasoline, and hoping that um, also for safety reasons that the, the smoke does not travel into my garage and uh, pollute my lungs. Um, but of course it definitely did. Um, but it burns quite intensely. Um, a little scary because uh, I was a little bit worried that um, as it melted then perhaps some of the plastic would uh, drip down onto the concrete that I have. Um, thankfully it did not do that. It stayed in the dish. But it burned quite intensely. And I was pretty happy um, with it. And I think it burned for probably about five minutes before it finally, finally went out. The excess napalm I stored away in a 20 mil vial and uh, labeled it for future use if I ever want to come back to this. And here are the five charred remains of uh, each of the experiments. That last one is uh, pretty dark and pretty big, the uh, grand finale. Um, and I wonder if that's because the um, reaction was allowed to get at higher temperature than the others. Um, possibly that polystyrene was more charred um, than the other reactions. And of course, here's a leftover napalm, which I will store in a safe place. Um, but this has been Sterling vs. Science. If you enjoyed, um, it really helps me out to uh, maybe share with others. Um, and of course, uh, let me know, as always, um, if any anything else I can do that would be interesting to you. So. I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.